Welcome to Scott Speed Triple Channel. Today's video will show the installation of carbon fiber tank and frame infills on the Speed Triple 1200 RS. It will also be helpful if you need to remove your battery, air filter, or get to your radiator cap or spark plugs. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so today we've got more carbon fiber. Tank infills, frame infills, front carrier wing, and a small centerpiece that goes under the headlights. Uh, the tank infills are these pieces here. The frame infills are these smaller pieces under here. The carrier wing is this piece up under here with the camera attached to it and the other piece is the center infill I don't know how the lights gonna be but it's right here I thought the piece I ordered was this entire piece and it turns out it was just this little piece I don't know if I'll put that on today or not I'm not sure about this piece either however when I do this it means removing the tank removing the seat removing the air box just to get down to these infill pieces on the side I also have a few wires that I've got exposed here that I ran through and couldn't get under the tank. Couldn't figure out how to run them before. I'm going to try to, while it's all apart, reroute these wires so they are no longer exposed out here. And the seat is off. Uh, you can see the massive amount of wiring that's up in here for that camera and those lights. And I'm going to try to maybe clean that up a little bit since I have to disconnect a couple pieces anyway today. First thing we've got to do is remove this cross brace. Two Torx bolts there. Uh, like most of the other ones on here, I think they're a T30. You can see what I've done is I've cut a piece of this green insulating tape. And I have... Set it right there next to my battery cable and I'm going to break it loose and immediately wrap that up. Alright. So I've got this out. The terminal is loose. wrap it up a little bit that way you can't uh, you can't short anything out so if I'm right I've got uh, all the cables taped and and uh, set up so they won't short anything out if I'm right I believe the battery can be removed now uh, maybe not Well, then again, maybe so. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this should come out. Let's take a little wiggle here. There we go. All right, battery's out. <clears throat> so that's an interesting configuration. There's a battery cage, plastic cage. Plastic battery cage and this tab. I am going to put this on a battery tender. I haven't started the bike in about three weeks. So I'm going to put this on a lithium ion battery tender while I work on the bike today. Okay, so I got the uh, battery tender connected. It's set on lithium ion. And uh, connect it to the battery. So I'm going to let that run. Flashing green means it's almost fully charged. It'll go full green when it's 100%. Uh, so there are two bolts. 
on each side that have to be removed. So this one right there and there's one more further down in there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, I've got the screwdriver touching it. Their Torx head bits. Uh, it could be a little tricky, I guess. And there's two on this side that have to be removed. And yeah, you can see the one under there and another one in there. Oh, that's a better view. Okay, they've got to be removed. Okay, all those bolts are out. And let's see how uh, the tank moves now. Oh yeah, now we can lift it up. Very nice. So I've had this tank lifted up before. I've had the tank infills off. I think what I'll do is lift it up a little bit, pull those tank infills off before working anymore. It gives you a little more room to get underneath it and get to all your connections. All right, there goes the rubber block. And there goes the tank infill. Do the one on this side. Oh yeah, pretty simple. Just press it down and out. And there's a rubber block here. Oh, I see what they were talking about. Scratching the, the paint. Okay. So let's just let it sit like this for a minute. So when you do lift up the tank, these pieces can go right over the top of this and scratch it really bad. So uh be careful of that. I will get a block of wood in here before I go any further to try to disconnect anything. And I've got both of the tank fills and rubber blocks out. <coughs> Excuse me. So I've been working on bikes quite a while and I have found that these wooden blocks give you a great way to hold up the bike gas tank while you're disconnecting stuff rather than lift it with your hand and reach under with one and uh, this way it'll keep them from scratching stuff over here I think I scratched this part of the frame a tiny little bit uh, I guess I'll have to live with it not too too badly but you can see up underneath got to disconnect some electrical connectors for the fuel pump and the gas gauge and fuel lines and blah 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 and probably some vacuum tubes and some electrical connectors on the air box. This is the first time I've had that I'm gonna be removing the tank completely. So, uh, all right, bear with me while I look to disconnect all these little lines. Got the tank ready to go. I haven't disconnected all the connectors yet. However, I'm in Florida and it's pretty hot and sweating quite a bit. I am going to take a moment break before I move on. Uh, I'm gonna find a just went in to uh, wash up my hands a little bit and I noticed I got a new hairstyle. Not sure if I like it or not. It's pretty hot out today. I'm doing a lot of sweating. So looking under here, you got two vacuum lines right here a fuel line right here not sure if you can see that but the orange thing is the fuel line there is a large electrical connector with a brown connector right behind the fuel line there's a black one further over there you see it better from right here uh, that's towards the far side and there's one that's up under here. A white one, just a little tiny one. And those are all... Alright, the two vacuum lines are off. The one with that connector goes to the outside. The one that slipped out of the connector goes to the inside. This was kind of a booger to get off. This one came off pretty easily. 
Uh, looks like they are two different hole sizes, so I don't think you could make a mistake. Yeah, they're definitely two different hole sizes. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but different diameters. So uh, they'll only go on one way. And next, I'm going to move up there, and it looks like the fuel line. Hopefully the fuel line doesn't leak anything. I'm going to put a rag under there just in case. <laughs> okay, to remove the fuel line, this orange clip has to be slid to the side. And there's a piece here and a button there. Squeeze the two and pull. Uh, it took me a little bit to figure out where they were, but it's out. Spilled just a couple drops of gas. Nothing is leaking. Next, we go to those electrical connectors. There are three of them. The two large electrical connectors both have a little tab here where my thumbnail is. You have to press in and pull out. And there's one on the opposite side of this one, same thing. Uh, one's black, one's brown. Do they look like the same connector? Uh, yeah, so the black one goes to the far side. I'll have to remember that just in case they fit the same. And there's one more up here, a small one. Connected in with the uh, small fastener. Let's get that one out. All right, so this final little white one was up under a small holder device there. You simply slid it up out, pulled it down, and there's a little tiny tab there that's in that little tiny hole right there. I used a, uh, the tip of the screwdriver to press it down and it fell right out so looks like the tank is completely free I'm gonna go ahead and get my cardboard box and put the tank out of the way One, two, three electrical, one fuel line, and uh, one, two vacuum hoses. All right. These two connectors are different, uh, same type thing. Press down on the little tab, slide them out, so no, no need to label anything. All I need to really remember is the black one goes to the right when I reconnect the tank. I'm going to go ahead and pull the bolts out and get the airbox cover off. Alright, so all the, all the bolts, actually screws for the airbox are out. There's how many of them? I don't know. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Can I pull it up? See how hard this is. Oh, yeah. That was not difficult at all. Free and clear. Rubber seal is... Does it have a rubber seal? Yeah, rubber seal's tucked in here still. It's still tight. Rubber seal is all tucked in. Now we get to see the guts of this baby. Throttle bodies. I'm gonna spritz those with a little carb cleaner. And a little bit of oily looking substance on there. See that air filter looks, uh, actually looks kind of dirty. I'm glad I'm replacing it. All right. So I loosened that. These two bolts have been completely loosened. I can take this off. They were not tight. They were not all the way snug down. So uh, here we go. The air intake ducts off. I'm gonna clean that when I'm uh, ready to put it back together. It's got nastiness on the outside. And there we are, throttle bodies one more time. Now you got some goop down in here. You know that looks like is air filter oil. Uh, kind of grimy. So I'm going to clean that up before I try to take anything else apart. That way nothing gets dropped all over the engine. 
So always a good idea to clean this up a little bit before you take it out. That way you're not spilling part, spilling stuff in the uh, underneath it. Uh, looks like this is a rubber flanged intake duct. This is gonna have to pop out over that. It looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six more more bolts before this can actually lift out. This one is loose. I don't know about this. This is a uh, new territory for me. Well, this whole sec this whole thing has been new territory. Ooh, a little rock. Yuck, rock. Like I said, not a bad idea to try to clean this up a little bit while you can. Brake cleaner, carb cleaner. Works pretty good if you can't just wipe it out. Alright, let's go ahead and see about removing this bottom piece of the airbox. So I simply loosened up the bolts in the back to see if this is going to move. And, uh... It does so it looks like that's all I need to do is get those bolts out and the air box itself will come off so those bolts are out they're very interesting looking uh, yeah uh, I don't know what the purpose is there's the holes have little relief cuts on the sides I'm guessing that's so you don't take them all the way out maybe they can just stay in there when you pull it Oh, too late. They're all the way out. And I want to be real careful because I do not know what this device is. Okay, so all this piece is moving with the air box. Looks like the only thing I have to worry about is this. Sweat dripping into my throttle bodies. Aha, felt it release. This rubber grommet is really holding it in place pretty heavy duty. Especially down at the bottom. Yeah. There we go. The bottom should be loose. One more piece. One more corner, I should say. Hmm. There we go. Okay, there's still something holding it on under there. There is a wire, a connector, and a, a tube. <clears throat> Very much struggling. I got the uh, tube off, but this one I can't seem to get loose. Looks like there's two two tabs that have to be pressed. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's two little tabs and I'm pressing the tabs. It doesn't seem to be working. On this side, there's no, no tabs or anything to press. It's only on that far side and it looks like two little tabs. I was able to get it turned up like this, so I've got a lot more room. Those two tabs, it looks like they have to be pressed directly in or in to... I can't tell. Shit, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> okay, took a break, had a cigarette. Came back to it. It was what I thought. You have to press these two tabs in and pull down. It was just a... Uh, little stubborn, finally came off. There's the 
tube breather tube goes on there and I don't see the tank infills from here let's look at the uh, new ones and see what they look like oh shit oh my goodness there's a different one for each side uh, that one looks like it would be for this side so there would be that front bolt no maybe not wait a minute wait a minute I think this one would be for this side yeah this one goes on this side so there's the front bolt there's a little clip there's a clip there's two different pieces under here uh, and there's a bolt wow this might be more difficult than I expected hmm all right so I put it in there one time but I uh, found out I had to take it back out one of the plastic pins that holds it in won't quite fit through the hole so a little bit of a needle file Two plastic pins, uh, plastic rivets basically that fit in there. And problem was I could not get this rivet through this hole. Still can't. Goes through the back one just fine. All right. So a whole lot of sweat five hours later and I've got one frame and fill in so now we got carbon fiber frame infill number one very nice I, uh, all right so I've got the uh, one tank infill on this side it's in that's the frame infill and on this side we've got a plastic cover for a bunch of wiring which is uh, had to come come loose to get to the frame infill which I just got both bolts loose I should be able to slide it out now made some room in there there we go that is the taint the the frame infill my fingers on so I can get that out now and this piece this this plastic piece is covering these wires I'm gonna go ahead and use that to run the wires that I have to put in the bike along that side. So that's kind of handy. That's a bonus. So, come to phase two of the project. And that will be to get these wires for the headlights and the cameras and all that tucked up inside the frame. Uh, Triumph went to, it looks like a lot of great measures to make sure all the wiring was hidden on this bike. You don't see any exposed wiring on this bike, the MFA, except up near the handlebars. The only exposed piece of wire or hose that you see is the clutch cable on this bike, even the radiator. So I've color coded the wires I'm gonna have to disconnect. Little tie straps, blue, green, yellow, uh, to make it easy to put back together after. This is the turn signal wire and this does belong in here. It connects to the back of that side cover that I've taken off. So after pulling out those fat wires that I put in this case, after pulling out the fatter wires that I'd stuck inside here, I was able to get this to go flush, to mount flush again. And I uh, got the pins in and I broke off a little tab on the bottom of this. There's one tab that's supposed to snap down below it. Uh, that broke off, but this is tight. It's not going anywhere. So I'm okay with that. So that was really difficult. Getting that rubber piece set back in. Uh, it took like an hour and a half. Two hours of struggling. Now I've got to reconnect the connectors underneath. The two hoses and the uh, electrical connector. 
Hopefully that'll all settle back in really good. I uh, used these little tiny hooks, this one mainly, to uh, reach in and press and pull and press and pull and press and pull and finally got it. This is the air intake duct behind the uh, the headlight bracket. You can lift it up, get it out of the way. Uh, that's the rubber booty you can see in there. Divided into four sections. And it's not lining up perfect on the bottom. That's why I'm having a hard time pushing this air box into place. Uh, I'm hoping I can get to it from here with a screwdriver or something and pop it up and get it to fall into place. So, a little bit of fidgeting and fudging. Got that back in. These bolts are just uh, snugged up so it doesn't pop up. Make sure you get the seals that are under here to press down nice. The seals I cleaned earlier, they're good. I got those six uh, funny looking bolts back in. They're just snug, same with the one up front, but uh, I was able to get this piece. This was a pain in the ass. It required me to pull all that crap up and out of the way to get to it. Uh, so down at the very bottom here, right where this screwdriver is, see the rubber? I don't know if you can see, I'm flexing it up. That piece had folded under on both sides and wouldn't let me push the air box fully in so when I came over here and pried these up a little bit it finally kind of snapped into place so I'm gonna take a quick look make sure all that looks really good and if that's so I'll start buttoning it back up so I got almost all this buttoned up time to put in a new air filter and let's take a look at the old air filter Seven thousand miles. No, really. So this is how I had to put the wires in. I put a little duct tape to keep them in place. They fit nice and flush. The tank doesn't press against them when I put it on. So I've got all my wires inside the frame now. It'll be nice. Now it's time to put the tank infills on the tank. I've already put the grommets. I've already put the rubber grommets in and the clips are in place. The clips don't, they're, they're at a funny angle compared to what they were. But uh, we'll see. Let's see what happens when I put it on. Uh, All right, so I've got the infills installed. It's time to get up under there and connect these connectors. There's a uh, the two electrical connectors, the black one goes to the far side, the orange one goes here, I just double checked that. I've got a fuel line to put on, which I still got wrapped in that rag, and this little electric connector, and two vacuum tubes. Then there's these rubber chunks that fit up inside the tank uh, somewhere like this. So they fall into this place here like so. I've got some wires on the other side that are kind of pressing on this a little, but I think it'll be okay. I'll, uh... So the wires, everything is connected. Fuel line, electrical connectors, and the vacuum hoses. Now I gotta try to figure out where exactly these little rubber pieces go again. It's... All right, so the gas tank is back on. The gas tank is back on. Fully secured. Everything is connected. Hopefully everything's working right. That's an awful lot of work to put these two pieces in, uh, four pieces. That was an awful lot of work. Thanks.
13.74 volts. I fully charged it a couple days ago and this is a one year old battery, a little over a year old. 13.74 volts. Feels pretty good. I think that's connected well. good a few minutes but I dropped several little screws down in there found most of them except for one uh, it's down in there somewhere I've fished for it for four hours uh, literally four or five hours worth of working on it I pulled everything off of the sides that I possibly can all the under carriages uh, the under plastics etc I've gotten the two tank infills all set up with the clips I've stripped off everything underneath looking for the stupid screw that I dropped it was in the top portion of the air box it was like the second to the last one I put in I dropped it it fell in I fished for it with a magnet I fished for it looked with a flashlight I fished in every little place I can stick a magnet in there couldn't find it I figured it might have fallen into one of the pans at the bottom I took those off uh, anyway that's gone it couldn't have fallen in anywhere and it can't get stuck anywhere I made sure it's not stuck up here by the sprocket it's not sitting on the where the swing arm pivot so I I don't think it's gonna hurt anything it's just a it's a real shame that I lost it but uh, if you remember in the last video you know that I took I bought a a kit of black fairing bolts and I uh, used those to replace most of the silver ones down here. And lo and behold, when I took them apart, three of them broke off to get these cases off, these pieces off. So I'm going to replace them with the original bolts as soon as that comes up. But uh, all right, guys, it's green. Let's see what happens. Here goes nothing. Your fingers crossed. There might be some warnings because the battery was disconnected. Welcome, Scott. Service overdue. Probably because the battery was disconnected. Let's click it down. fuel low it was low when I She's all back together. Tank infill, frame infill, everything put back together. After I stripped out that silver bolt there that holds that small fairing on, I put the originals back in. Took those cheap black plastic aluminum ones out. Uh, cleaned it up, waxed it. Wax the hugger, the chain guard, the heel guards, those covers underneath, tank, tail section, these covers, headlights, fairing, front fender, lower spoiler. All waxed, ready to go. It's been started up once. 
A little bit later tonight, I'm going to take it over, fill it up with gas. It's really, really low. And uh, we'll see how it runs. Hopefully, the service engine soon light will go away.